Welcome back. Today I want to talk specifically about the third proof. The four proofs are so easy and make your access into meditation such a treat. And that's what we want. We want a biofeedback device which is giving us treats continuously. I remember I reached this point where every single time I went into meditation, I was getting a proof from the parasympathetic system and I thought to myself, this is divine, this is amazing. If I never progressed past this, this would actually be fulfilling enough that I will have fulfilled some of the huge desire for my meditation and, and understanding and being able to meditate consistently. This, th that's the beginning of enough. Now, of course, we want to go way past the four proofs, but that beginning in itself is humongous. And the ability to get into your parasympathetic system every single time that you sit to meditate is invaluable. And it sets you up for massive success later on. So we're setting the groundwork, right? We're building the pyramid and we're setting the groundwork. And instantly, as we step into the four proofs, we are stepping deeply into competence, deeply into the ability to go inside every single time. And that's why they're so amazing. And the third proof, some people have a little trouble feeling. And so I want to spend a little extra time on the third proof and make sure that you can feel it today. So let's get into it. There is actually a Kriya Yoga lineage who stresses that you feel the currents in the spine. They want you to feel the warm and the cool current in the spine. And I have a little bit of a problem with the way that they present it. It's presented as if you have to do that. And instead of, you know, this might come up as you're practicing your Kriya Yoga, you might begin to feel these things later on, but don't worry about it. Instead, they present it as something that you should be feeling every single time. And so you get a lot of yogis that I spoke with for years and years that were very, very frustrated because they were not finding that. My presentation of the third proof is actually my gift to that entire Kriya community. I mean, all of the lineages, it's my gift to them. It, it's my presentation that you don't have to make this so bloody hard and be so hard on yourself and get so frustrated. You can actually just relax into the parasympathetic system and get to the beginning of those feelings very, very easily. And it's the dorsal vagal inside of you. It's the dorsal vagal complex. It's the healing parasympathetic system in the body. It's the one that you use every single night when you go into a deep restorative sleep and the body is healed through the night. That process takes place with the dorsal vagal and we can begin to feel it. So the four proofs are one, I'm going to sit very still. I'm going to practice heart rate variability resonance. I'm going to practice that one because it's so pure and it's ensuring that everything that I'm doing is correct. So now I'm going to practice the heart rate variability resonance. I'm going to sit very still. Maybe my hands are open sitting in my lap like this. That will help me to feel the very first proof, hands hot and heavy. Now, some people say, well, my hands were not hot. They were just warm. That's it. That's it. You did it. Well, it was just slightly warmer than normal. That's it. You did it. The hands, that's close enough. And sometimes you'll go so deep that they'll, oh my God, my hands feel hot, like really hot. So maybe you'll get to that later, but it doesn't matter. You felt the warm. That's it. These are subtle things. We're, we're, opening up our perception of ourself and we're looking in very closely and we're looking for small things and these small things will help us to become sensitive to be here now to be conscientious to be receptive and still and silent 
by our ability to notice things will increase, right? That will go on increasing as we sit very still and practice our meditation. So first, hands hot and heavy. Second one, the lip may begin to tingle and that's because the heart rate is going down. So the heart rate goes up a little bit as we breathe in, the heart rate goes down as we breathe out this nice long out breath to get into the heart rate variability resonance, right? And we're un under seven breaths per minute, right? So the breath is very long and that facilitates this connection to the dorsal vagal, the parasympathetic system. And so the blood will recede from the lips as the heart rate goes down. And so you might feel some of that, especially in the lower lip, the lips may begin to tingle. Again, it's very small. And if we don't notice it, we just skip over it. We go to the next proof, which is the dorsal vagal complex itself. So between the heart and the spine, going backwards is the dorsal vagal and it goes all the way along the spine. So you might feel it at the top. You might feel it in the middle. A lot of people feel it around the diaphragm and you might feel it very low on the spine, right? So all along the spine lies the dorsal vagal. And that's the one we wanna get in touch with today. We're gonna to work to get in touch with it. And the fourth proof, as we're sitting very still, we're entering deeply into the parasympathetic system, that freeze response just begins to really show itself and the whole skin begins to tingle, right? Everything is working correctly and the skin might begin to tingle. You might notice it first in somewhere in your body that is very relaxed. It might be your face, it might be your hands, it might be your arms, it might be your legs but some part of the skin will begin to tingle. And this is very deep, this is very wonderful proof that you are awakening the parasympathetic system. But if you only have the first proof, I just have hands hot and heavy, that is enough proof that you are in the parasympathetic system. You are awakening this healing system within yourself. You're getting out of fight and flight. You're getting out of pure socialization and you're getting into this deep parasympathetic system of healing, the same one that we get in deep, deep sleep, but you're awake, body asleep, mind awake. You get more benefit this way. It's amazing and that's what meditation is, right? So now back to that third proof. How do we really get in touch with this dorsal vagal? So we're gonna do some long rescue breaths and we're gonna do some holds as well, all right? So I'm gonna do, first I'm gonna breathe in, I'm gonna breathe out very long, as long as I can. And I'm gonna do it with an open mouth so you can hear it, all right? I want you to hear and know that I'm breathing out long, all right? But when you do this yourself, it works even better when you don't make the sound and you do it through your nose, breathe through your nose, it's much better, it's much more efficient for the body and you will get better results faster when you only breathe through the nose, all right? So let's try that. So my out breath was much longer than my in breath, right? That's what I want. I want that proportion. And so what's happening as we do this long out breath? Well, the diaphragm is pushing on the lungs to expel the air. And so all that pressure is increased in the rib cage area, in the thoracic cavity. And so all that pressure is pushing back towards the spine and it's causing extra pressure on the dorsal vagal. We said it's between the heart and the spine, right? So as I breathe out long, I'm increasing that pressure. So I wanna put my mind in that region, especially down here around the diaphragm, but let's say from here down to the diaphragm, okay? I wanna put my mind there and I'm just feeling. I'm just, you know, like my hand is there and I'm just feeling it, right? That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a little tickle on top of the spine. That's all I'm looking for. It might be a very tiny little sensation. That's great. Great things start from small beginnings. That's what we want. That tiny little tickle. That's all I'm looking for. <laughs> it's so great. Okay, let's do it again. 
We're just going to make a long out breath. Sensing that dorsal vagal, right? Maybe we sense all the way down to the bottom of the spine. Maybe that starts to feel blissful, right? Try one more time. Sensing inside, sensing in behind the heart on top of the spine as the out breath is going. Can I feel just a little bit of that pressure? Maybe I just feel the increased pressure on the spine. That's enough. That is a beginning you're getting a little bit of that third proof, right? All right, that's a wonderful, wonderful way to begin to feel the dorsal vagal. You might feel it all the way down towards your tailbone. You might feel, feel it all the way up towards the medulla. You might feel it in the middle. You might feel it behind the heart. We're trying to sense the whole thing and see which part of this starts to feel like it has more pressure, which part of this feels like it might begin to tingle. Now let's try a breath hold, okay? We're just gonna do a comfortable breath hold. Breathe in, hold the breath, and relax the rib cage. So, you know, you can breathe in and I'm still puffed up, I'm not relaxed. But now I'm gonna let the rib cage settle. And now there's more pressure, you see? So I'm breathing in, relax. Feel along the dorsal vagal. Does it feel like it's pulling you in a little bit? Does it tingle? Is there increased pressure? Any of those things are good. Breathe out. Let's try it again. Every time you hold the breath, you wanna spend a little time in recovery, all right? You wanna recover from the hold. And that's when the magic happens. Because when you hold the breath, the blood pressure is gonna go up. And when you recover, blood pressure is going to go down, it will go down slightly lower than what you started out at. So that recovery is the magic, all right? Very important. So let's try it again. Breathe in, hold, and just feel, feel along the spine. Do you feel just a tiny bit of pressure, just a tiny tickle, just a tiny bit of something? That's what you want. Breathe out nice and slow. Let's do the rescue breath again. Breathe in. Breathe out very long. Now we can turn this into a little bit of a Qigong exercise if we kind of move with it. Sometimes oh, we're trying too hard, we're, we're, our mind is too focused and we need to loosen up. And so if you can kind of shake the body a little bit, it helps the whole body and the mind relax and just go with the flow a little bit more because your body's getting a little flowy, right? So let's try that. Just shake and feel like you're shaking the spine. You're shaking yourself backwards, you know? You're, you're, you're allowing all the chips to come back home, right? Just shake it. Let's try that one more, that was really nice. Let's try that one more time. <laughs> okay.
So now you have a few practices to really try this out. We have a tiny little hold. We have a tiny little rescue breath. We have a, a rescue breath with shaking. All of these little practices, try them through the day or through a few days or through a few weeks. Now and then, just be very relaxed about it. Be very flowy about it. Don't stress yourself out. And that's where people get messed up in yoga. I've got to get this right and I'm going to do it. You know, and they come in with their left brain and all the doubts surface. And it's like, oh my goodness, you know, can you just throw that away and just have fun for a minute? Just let go and have fun for a minute. Just play with these things and see what happens. And when you play and when you relaxed and when you flow and when you practice these things, Boom! You're in the parasympathetic. You get the hands hot and heavy. You get the lips tingle. You get the dorsal vagal going. The skin starts to tingle. Oh my goodness. It all comes together so easily. It was always there waiting for you. Just waiting for you to be in the right place, in the right frame of mind, with the right practice. And boom! It works like magic. And that's what I want for you. You know, recently I did a video where I mentioned the spinal twist, how good it can be to do that over and over again through your day if you're having lower back troubles. And that pose in yoga, they call it Matsyendra. It comes from him, right? It comes from Matsyendra. And they, they said the lore is that he is so good at this that he can actually twist so far and his whole rib cage is pointing straight backwards. Of course, that's impossible. That's physically impossible. But they're saying he's very, very good at the posture. He did it a lot. It was very good for him. And the deeper understanding of that lore is that he is turning around and looking backwards into himself perfectly. He's going backwards into the dorsal vagal. And so when you're practicing this rescue breath, you are becoming like Matsyendra you are turning backwards perfectly and awakening that dorsal vagal and feeling it deep inside. So very powerful things that we're working with. So I hope you love this. If you did, be sure to hit that bell down below so I can see all of you next time.